It's Children's Day, Convent family, and we've come together to have a special day led by the children of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church community. So come and let's join in and pray for them and encourage them as they lead us in worship this morning. God bless you. Hello, my name is Aiden, and I'm going to be reading Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him in his acts of power. Praise him for surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of a trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the tremble and the dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of the cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear Father, thank you for taking us through another week. Thank you for watching over us and caring for us. Thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you for allowing us to see another children's day. We now ask that you watch over this service. We pray that all that is said and done is pleasing in your sight. We also pray that you get all the glory and honor from this service. Now teach us to pray the way you taught your disciples by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, the scripture is Psalm 27, verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advances against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besieges me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Yeah. 
Children's Day. Welcome to the 2021 Children's Day Worship Service. My name is Matthew Thomas. I'm 11 years old and I just graduated from the fifth grade. I'm a member of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church Sunday School and singing the Children's Choir. I was asked to do the Children's Day emphasis. The theme for this year is standing on the promises of God. My life matters. I consider this an honor because I have not seen my sisters and brothers of the CABC over the past year due to the COVID-19 virus. The virus caused disruption in all our lives, such as closing schools, cultural locations, and government organizations. In our nations and across the world, unfortunately, many people who became sick from this virus died, while others have lasting complications. Given the high rate of infections, we endure physical or social distancing and wear masks to slow the rate of the infection across the nation. The pandemic made me incredibly sad. While I no longer had to get up early to attend school, I could not socialize with my friends that I would see at school. To quote Charles Dinkins in The Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of time, it was the worst of times. As far back as I can remember, my parents taught me I was not just born, but created in the image and likeness of God. Genesis 1, verse 27, and James 3, verse 9. Therefore, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, who has a plan and purpose for my life, I understand that he will use my gifts, talents, and ability to accomplish that purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11 confirms this. I know the plans I have for you, to prosper and not to harm you, to give you hope and future. When we stand on the promises of God, he can use our lives to become better Christians, believers in Christ, to make a difference in our family and community. For example, music is a form of worship to the Lord. Offering praises to him through song and melody during our worship services, this is one way to teach biblical truth about standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God will bring the right thinking, right actions, and structure in our lives of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I'm like most 11-year-old boys, I want to play and have fun. At the same time, I'm still learning what standing on the promises of God mean. It does not mean I get everything I want, that's for sure. When I was seven years old, I gave my life to Christ and got saved. The word of God says, If thou shalt confess to my mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine of the heart that hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. Since I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, he promised me he will never leave me nor forsake me. Hebrew 13, verse 5. That means he is my fortress, defense, help, ever-present help in. Time of trouble. I'm thankful to God for keeping my family and I safe during the pandemic. Also, I'm praying that God will give scientists the wisdom and knowledge to create a safe vaccine for children my age. 
My friends and I come from different racial and ethnic backgrounds that is the color of their skin and religion from mine. However, we enjoy playing the same games and hanging out at the park together. I like being around people who are different from me because I learn from them and they learn from me. In fact, Jesus liked hanging around people who were so different from him in many ways. Samaritans, tax collectors, kids, fishermen, and lepers. He encourages other people to do the same. People in his day and people in today. You, me, everyone, my life matters. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them, for not such is the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, verse 14. During Sunday school, I've learned that prayer is essential to the Christian life. It is important that we be strong in our faith and obedient to the word of God. The Bible tells us, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee in thy days, who will be long on earth, Ephesians verse Ephesians 6, verse 1 through 3. This is another one of God's promises. As children of God, we should trust his word and obey it. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, yield your will to your will. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not vain. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 through 58, the apostle Paul is telling us to be thankful for the victory found in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, the CABAC, let us be thankful for what we have, food, shelter, and clothing. Most importantly, Christ who gave us the victory over sin and death. And John 3, verse 16 teaches, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him and should not perish and have everlasting life. I conclude by saying God's plan goes beyond our wildest dreams. And therefore, since it is impossible for God to lie, let us continue to stand on the promises of God because that's all that matters. I pray that God be glorified in our lives so his light can shine through me to be more like Jesus. Thank you. Well, these are our ministry announcements for this Sunday for the children and youth ministry. Um, I would like to thank Ms. Hines um, for doing an excellent job with our young people for, to our children's choir. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart to Ms. Irene and to the parents for getting their children out for the recording. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanna give um, a shout out to our mentoring ministry. Each and every Saturday, they have a meeting. If you would like to get connected with our mentor and ministry, we would ask that you please email me at zwarren at conventchurch.org. We would love for you to get connected with our mentoring ministry. And they meet every first Saturday of the month. And you can email me at zwarren at conventchurch.org. Also, I would like to highlight all of our graduates for 2021. Congrats, congrats, it's over. For some of you who you know, are graduating from college, but for those who are going into college, it's a new beginning. And for those who are graduating from middle school into high school and from elementary to middle school, we wanna say congratulate you um, on your job, well done. Also, I want to remind you, if you would like to be recognized for Graduate Sunday, which is going to take place on July the 25th, we're asking that you please email me your images and your name so we may start gathering the information for Graduate Sunday, which is going to take place on July the 25th. We're asking that all graduates, whether you're from preschool all the way up to college and college and beyond and technical schools we're asking that you please email me your your uh, up image of you so that we may be able to recognize you on graduate sunday also convent avenue baptist church we're asking that you please um, align with us as we're going to give out baskets to our graduating seniors and if you would love to support that cause um, for our graduate students normally we're here and we do our annual bake drive but we're not able to do that but you would love to make a, a contribution to our graduates please email me phone call me and get connected because we would love for you to support our young people 
Also, I want to remind you that each and every Sunday, we have Sunday School for the Young People at 11.30 via Zoom. You can find the information on the church website. So immediately following our Sunday School hour, we normally have our worship experience. So please note, parents, you're saying, well, where are the young people? We are on Zoom each and every Sunday at 11.30 for our Sunday School hour and 12 p.m for our worship experience. Listen, Convent, I am so excited today. I have my friend here, my brother here, none other than Pastor Kenneth Young from the Calvary Baptist Church of Boston, Massachusetts. I am so excited. I've seen this young man, um, this young pastor. I've seen him grow um, from his freshman year at American Baptist College. And then he went on to graduate school and now he's pastoring and I'm so excited that he's here worshiping with us today. And so he's going to bring the word on this annual Children's Day. So convent, please pray and let me allow me to present my friend, my brother, um, Pastor Kenneth Young. So let's receive him as as he get ready to bring a relevant word for our young people. Love you and have an awesome day, Convent, as we celebrate our annual Children's Day. Good morning. At this time in our service, we ask you to participate by giving your tithes and offering. We have five ways to contribute. They are, one, mail to the church at 420 West, 145th Street. New York, New York, 10031. Attention Finance Committee. Two, on our website, conventchurch.org. Three, cash app, dollar sign, convent NYC. Four, give LaFi, look for the picture of the sanctuary. Five, PayPal. Please give as it has been given to you. At this time, we will have our corporate prayer for those who are in need of prayer. And you say, it's me, it's me, oh, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So let's bow our heads as we go to God in prayer corporately. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. And we praise you for another opportunity to just say thank you. Thank you for being so mighty. Thank you for being so merciful. And thank you for being our God that sits high and that looks low. Most of all, God, we thank you for saving us. We thank you for giving us joy. We thank you for giving us peace in the midst of everything that we're going through, God. God, as things begin to open back up, we ask right now that you would keep us safe from any hurt, harm, or danger, God. God, we thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for keeping us throughout a whole year of the pandemic. Some of us have lost loved ones, God, and they've gone home to be with glory because we know to be absent from this body is to be in your presence. God, we thank you for their legacy. We thank you for their life. We thank you for the wisdom that they've imparted into our lives. And God, we come lifting you up today. God, we come saying thank you, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to tell you thank you. God, we come praying for our young people as they get ready to finish school, help them to finish strong. We come praying for those who are getting ready for college. We come asking right now that you would give them strength, release the scholarship and the resources that they need, God. God, we thank you for our children today who are participating on program today. We thank you for them. We thank you for keeping them and thank Thank you for guiding them. We thank you for strengthening them. God, we come asking right now that they would finish the semester strong as they continue to learn virtually and some who are learning in person. God, we come asking right now that you'd watch over every parent, every caregiver right now, God. God, we come praying right now for those who are in need of um, money for their rent. We come asking right now that every rent is paid, every mortgage is paid, every light bill is paid, every gas bill is paid. God, we thank you for what you're giving ready to do right now God God we come asking right now that you would continue to to allow you to anoint our pastor God we because we believe that the anointing of God flows down God God continue to guide him continue to strengthen him continue to give him vision God continue to give him insight God continue to allow us to lead to follow where you are leading him God God we thank you for the many blessings and the outpouring that you are getting ready to release over this house God God we thank you for the man of God 
God, that's going to stand up and preach your word today, God. God, we love you today. God, if there's someone that don't know you today, we pray that they get to know you, God. God, we're praying for right now for someone who has to go before the doctor, God. God, we speak healing right now. We speak deliverance right now. God, we come against every cancerous tumor that someone has faced with right now. God, we come in the name of Jesus, God. We come against depression. We come against suicide. God, we come asking right now that you would use the people in a mighty way that they may be able to declare your word. They may be able to say that no weapon formed against them are going to prosper through you. God, we love you today. God, we lift your name today. God, we know you to be mighty. We know you to be strong. And we come asking right now that you continue to walk with us, that you continue to talk with us, that you continue to be our all in all. God, we cannot make it without you today, God. God, we love you today and we praise you. We give your name the glory and honor in everything that we say and do. Use us as only you can, God. Continue to get the glory, God, because we love you. And we thank you for just being our God. God, you're so awesome. You're so mighty. Continue to be mighty in our life, God, because we're nothing without you. It is in your name we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Hello, I'm Pastor Kenneth Young here at Calvary Baptist Church in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And I am so excited to be here with you. Um, we are right outside of Boston and this is going into our 150th year here at the historic Calvary Baptist Church in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank uh, my brother, uh, Reverend Alamazi Warren for the invite, as well as Pastor uh, Williams uh, for allowing me to share with you on today. I'm just excited, and uh, this is indeed a daunting task to be able to share with you, um, but I hope and pray that you're able to get something out of this message. Uh, before we do anything, uh, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, for being uh, all that we need you to be in our lives. And God, we pray that something will be said on today uh, that will help someone on their journey. God, I pray that you will bless all of the people who are listening, especially our young people who are listening on today. God, please let the words from my mouth uh, be so clear that they're able to take from this uh, message and apply it to their lives. God, I pray that you will drop me down into the storehouse of knowledge. Give me preaching power right now. God, give me uh, clarity of mind. Uh, allow me to uh, be your vessel. Let me speak the oracles of life to your people. God, hide me behind the cross so they'll see you and hear you and not me. God, I love you and I praise you. It's in your son's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. So on this uh, special day uh, for our young people, I want to journey to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Numbers 13, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, uh, beginning at verse 26, Numbers 13, uh, beginning at verse 26, English Standard Version. And it reads like this. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the hill country. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the Jordan and along the Jordan. But Caleb, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone to spy it out, it is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came, who come from the Nephilim. And we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers. And so we seemed to them. Uh, normally I would just read that version, but since this is a, a youth day, a children's day, I want to read it from the message translation, uh, just the uh, verses 31 through 33, and it reads like this. But the others said, we can't attack those people. They 
They're way stronger than we are. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people whole. Everybody we saw was huge. Why? We even saw the Nephilim giants. The neck giants come from the Nephilim. Alongside them, we felt like grasshoppers and they looked down on us as if we were grasshoppers. For a few moments until you're hearing, I wanna preach from this title, My Voice Matters. My Voice Matters. We live in a time where we can see daily that people uh, have been canceled out as if their voice does not matter. Uh, we live in what some have deemed to be cancel culture. You can say one thing wrong and nobody wants to hear anything else from you. And while we deem this to be a time of cancel culture, I believe that this type of uh, activity has been going on for a long time especially in our place of worship. I love the church. I was born and raised in the church. Matter of fact, I was born and raised in a small rural country church down south in Georgia. Uh, but in that church, I knew that my voice didn't matter. As a young person, I knew that I was supposed to sit there and to be silent and to listen to the church service. I knew that I needed to, to be quiet at all times when entering into the sanctuary. Even though there was not a whole lot of activities for my age group or even for people younger, uh, it still reigns uh, in my spirit today hearing some of the old people, older people tell us that, you know, baby, you need to just be quiet. You're in the church. A lot of times I had thoughts and visions and dreams of what we could do as young people. And although we thought as a youth ministry, youth choir was really good in the area that we were in, it still was not enough attention to the young people in our community, in our church, and even in our area. Essentially what I was being told was that your voice didn't really matter. This is something that the church has to deal with, in particular, the black church definitely has to deal with, that we have subjugated youth or young folks to uh, being a, of a lower thing, uh, that you, you don't say a whole lot. We'll put you to the side or we'll put you in a certain classroom that your voice doesn't always count. Your voice doesn't always matter. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine growing up in the church, not having your voice heard and then going outside of the church where so many different things are happening that your voice is still not heard. You feel as if your voice does not matter. It does not matter. And I recall going to the doctor's office with my uh, beautiful young brown daughter. Uh, she was at around the age of two at the time. And our pediatrician told us that after a while, she is going to start screaming, yelling, and throwing a temper tantrum. Now, JL, our oldest, JL was not that kid. She didn't throw temper tantrums. She was a quiet baby, a sweet baby who, who took her bottle, took her, her binky or her pacifier, and she went to sleep. She was one of those type children that made you want to have three or four more kids. <laughs> she was not that child. But the pediatrician told us she said, after a while, when she does not feel as if her voice is heard, she's going to scream and cry and complain. And let me tell you, uh, a, few mo a few months down the road, JL began to scream, cry, and complain when she did not feel that her voice was heard or her voice mattered. Can you imagine that? that we are living in a society in which we see a lot of our young people who are crying out, complaining, because they feel as if their voice does not matter. 
Can you imagine that some of the things that are happening in our society is because people feel as if their voice does not matter? This is not anything new because when we look at this text I'm tasked to teach here on today, we see the same exact thing happening here. Matter of fact, we see this happening to people who God deemed to be his voice. He's using some of these people. He's using, matter of fact, two people in this text to be his, his vessel to get them to the place that he wants them to be in. Some of you know the story. The children of Israel, the people of Israel have been uh, led away out of captivity from uh, Pharaoh and his people. And they have seen God move in a mighty way. God has moved them to a Red Sea. And, and Pharaoh was there trying to take them out. And God told Moses to stretch out his arm. And he opens up the Red Sea. And the children of Israel are able to walk on the ground. And then when they get to the other side, he tells Moses to close, to close his arm so the sea closes back up. And they begin to see the bodies of those uh, who were trying to take them out. Now they are being taken out by the almighty hand of God. God has shown them amazing acts. He, he made sure that manna fell from heaven when they complained about not having food to eat. He made sure that something that was sweet and savory and flaky uh, came down from heaven. And then he rained down quail to make sure they had meat to eat. God did some amazing things in front of them. He turned bitter water to sweet water at Mara. God made sure that he took care of his people. He told them that I have a place for you and the place that I want to take you to is a place that's flowing with milk and honey. It's a place that's plush. It's a place where you can have everything that you need. It's a place where, where if you were thinking about something, you can have it. It's a place that has been promised to you. Can you imagine that? God said, I won't take you out of captivity just to leave you in the wilderness to die. I'm going to stop right here. I know that this is Youth Sunday or Children's Sunday, and, but I believe that's a word for somebody in here as we are going through this pandemic that God will bring you out to leave you somewhere just to die on the side of the road or die in the wilderness. God says, and he always has a plan for not only the children of Israel or the people of Israel, but God has a plan just for you. I hope and pray that you can type that into the comment section right now and say, I believe God. I believe God has a plan just for me. I believe God has a plan for you, children. I believe God has a plan for you, teenager. I believe God has a plan for you. I believe God has a plan for all of us. And what we are hearing in the text on this day, that we hear the conclusion of God's plan. God's plan was to take you from someone who was supposed to be like God, Pharaoh. Pharaoh in Egypt was supposed to be like a demigod, like a god. He said, I'm going to show you, after raining down those 10 plagues, I'm going to show you that I am God. I am the King of kings, and I am indeed the Lord of lords. And I'm so much of a God, a good God, that I'm going to take you out and lead you to a place that I have promised you. They are here. Moses sends out 12 spies. And Moses sent these spies out to look at the land. He says, I want you to go and survey the land. He tells them to go and survey the land. They come back with their report. When they come back with their report, we have 10 that they don't give a good report. We only have two people that give a positive report. When I look at this text, first movement, I see that when we listen to people, number one, it gives the listener a, a, a different perspective. When we understand that different voices matter, that it gives the listener to those who are listening to these different voices, it gives them a different perspective. Here in America, one of the biggest things that a lot of companies and 
Nonprofit organizations are dealing with, even in our schools, are dealing with this sense of diversity. Why we need diversity? What, what's the purpose of, of being diverse? Why do we need to hear from diverse uh, voices? Well, studies have shown that if you have diverse voices that are sitting at the table, and that doesn't just mean race or ethnicity, but even when it comes down to age, you will begin to see different sides of the corner. or you'll begin to see different perspectives. You'll begin to see different parts of this puzzle. And sometimes as leaders and sometimes as people, we only see our side of the story. We only see one side of the story. But when we began to listen to more people, we began to understand and see the whole picture for what it is worth. They needed to listen to all of the voices. One major uh, group of people are, are listening to the negativity because these folks are established people. These folks are folks who knew what it meant to be in the wilderness. These people who are here understood what they felt like God was doing. But God says that not only does he send these folks to spy out the land, but he comes back with a good report from two people, which is Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua tend to fall on the younger side. And while Caleb stands up and he quiets down the people after they give a, a bad report by saying, yes, we know that the, the fruit is big. Yes, we know that the land is plush. Yes, we know it's flowing with milk and honey. Yes, we know all of these good things. We still don't believe God. Can you imagine that? People who are seasoned have seen God move in a mighty way. People who understood, or at least they thought they understood who God was, they still did not believe God. But they had some young people who were there, some young folks who were courageous, and they raised their voice. Caleb quiets down the people, and he says, listen, I need you to hear what God is telling me and what God is saying. Is that as long as we have God on our side, that there is nothing too hard for God. That's God's word for somebody in here. That sometimes we've been listening to the wrong person. Sometimes we've been listening to the wrong voices. Sometimes we're listening to the wrong voices because we just believe because a certain voice sits or uh, looks a certain type of way, then that's the person that we're supposed to be listening to Why God is using other vessels, Why God is using other people to give you a word from on high, Why God is using another person to give you the right word. Have you ever been there? Have you ever listened to the wrong voice? Because it didn't fit. The bill. So you listen to the wrong voice. I'm reminded going to school, I was in class and, and I just knew that certain people in the class were really good people. Certain people in the class didn't get in trouble. Certain people in the class knew what they, or at least I thought they knew what they were doing. But then I had another friend who didn't say a whole lot. I had another friend who was very quiet. She, she, didn't, she kept to herself. She didn't talk a whole lot. She didn't say a whole lot to a whole lot of people. She didn't do a, a whole lot of not, uh, uh, anything with anybody else. But when she said something, Something inside of me said that I need to stop and listen to what she's saying. And she didn't fit in with the crowd. She didn't fit in with people inside the school. She didn't fit in with anybody else. But she knew what she was talking about. And she said to me a few things about the test that we had coming up. She told me a few things that I needed to look at. And while everybody else was talking in their own little crew, their own little clique, own little group, uh, she told me some things that was helpful for me. And I had to make a decision 
I had to know if I wanted to listen to what was popular, listen to what people were saying that were in the popular group, or I wanted to listen to what she would say that she was an outsider, a different perspective, a different voice. And I listened to that different voice because I believed that what she had to say was going to be helpful to me. And all I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes we listen to popular people in, pop, in popular crowds instead of listening to a vessel in which God has sent to us. God sent these two men, these two younger men, to, to give them a word from God. God sent these two younger men, Caleb and Joshua, to, to, to give them what God was saying. And instead of listening to the younger people, they listened to people that they thought were more established. They, they told, essentially told Caleb and Joshua that their voice did not matter. When you look at this text, and I like this text, what, what God is doing to Caleb and Joshua, God is trying to give them, here it is, God is trying to give them a sneak peek of their future. <laughs> God is trying to give them a sneak peek of their future. God is trying to show them that this land is big enough, this land is nice enough, and look at the fruit. Look how sweet these grapes are. Look at everything that we brought back. All we got to do is do exactly what God is saying. And Caleb says, I'm God, I, I have enough God in me. I've had enough experiences with God that I believe God enough that when we walk through the land, God is going to give it to us. God was trying to show them through Caleb and Joshua that this is a sneak peek of what I have in store for you. All you got to do is follow through. God is trying to show them that if they listen to these younger voices, that it would give glory to God and that God would show them how good and how great he is. They believed that others did not. They had enough faith when others did not. They had enough strength when others did not. They believed in God. They believed in God. They knew that God was using them. They knew that their voice actually mattered. They knew that they were listening to what God was saying to them. They, they knew that this was indeed the promised place for God's people. But instead, children of Israel, the people of Israel, wanted to believe in a bad report. Which goes to show us that our voices matter. Your voice matters. I don't care how young you are, your voice matters. Because your voice at times will show us the will of the Father. This was the will of the Father concerning the people of Israel. Yes, it was younger people, but this was the will of the Father concerning the people of Israel. That God used these two to be obedient. Which says to us, which says to church leaders, which says to the world that sometimes we don't know who God is going to use. But we ought to have a spirit of discernment or we ought to discern what God is saying, when God is saying, when God is using people that may not look like us, people that may be younger than us, people that may not understand the way we do certain things. God may use different people to bring about his will for our lives. And I believe this wholeheartedly that a lot of our younger people have been sitting and snickering and laughing at the church because when they have walked in a lot of our buildings, they have seen how out of date it is. And now that we've been out of it, we need it. I'll say it again. I'm not ashamed to say it. Even as a pastor, we've needed younger perspectives to understand how do we tap in to their world. Because we've been used to living in another world, but now the church has had to transform into understanding Facebook and understanding Instagram and understanding TikTok and TikTok. And this is the world that they indeed live in. This is how they have been groomed and shaped throughout their lives. And we are now here trying to understand it so that we are able to push the gospel out. And evangelize the lost. 
This was God's will concerning them. He was trying to use this voice to, to, to raise up his standard for his people. But instead, it was squashed by rumors and lies. Have you ever been there? You tried to do what was right? I don't want to talk to a younger person right now. Have you ever been there when you was trying to do what was right? You was trying to do the right thing. You was trying to say the right thing. You was trying to go the right way. And in the midst of all of that, you had other people that began to shout down what you were saying. Began to spin lies about what you were trying to do. And let me tell you, as long as you're doing what God has called you to do, as long as you are listening to God, God will always get the last say so. I'll leave you with this. I normally uh, don't do part of our routine with our two girls. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Four-year-old JL uh, is four going on 14. And two-year-old Zion feels like she's already uh, in, in, in middle school and so, so she, they all, they have these personalities and people would tell us that uh, even though they're close together, they're still going to have different personalities. I normally don't do this part of our nightly routine, but this time my wife had something else that she was doing. And so I had to help uh, get them prepared for bed. So I'm helping them get uh, putting things together so that they'd be prepared for bed. And while I was trying to make sure that JL brushed her teeth and, and flossed the right way so that she can get ready for bed, JL said to me, Daddy, we don't do it like that. And I said, in my father role, well, you're going to do it the way I want you to do it. <laughs> I, I hope all the parents are listening. I'm sure you pulled that card out before. She said, but daddy, that's not the way we do it. I, I always put the toothpaste on my toothbrush and I always pour in the mouthwash and, and I, I open up the closet and get the floss out. I said, you don't do all of that, not by yourself. Yes, I do, daddy. Yes, I do. I do, daddy. I do do it. I said, no, you don't. Because I don't have time to play around with you tonight. I'm tired and it's time for you to go to bed. And she started contesting what I was saying. But she said, Daddy, 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 this is how I do it. This is the right way to do it. This is the way we do it every night, Daddy. Daddy, can you just please, please, please listen to what I'm saying? Let me do it. I said, JL, I don't have time for that. I got to go to work in the morning, and it's time for you to go to sleep. She said, but Daddy... This is how we do it. In the midst of us going back and forth, she said, Daddy, you're not listening to me. And I said, I don't have to listen to you because I'm the daddy. So you're going to listen to me and you're going to do what I tell you to do. She said, but Daddy, can you please just listen to me? I wasn't hearing her voice. Next thing I know, my wife comes around the corner. She said, what is going on? I said, JL want to do all this stuff and I'm trying to get her together to go to bed. She said, well, she does it all by herself. And you know what JL told me? She looked me in the eye. She said, see, daddy, I told you I'd do it by myself. See, daddy, I was just trying to tell you. I just wanted you to listen to me. I know how to do it. And inside, I felt so small. My heart sunk. I had to apologize because I said some things that were wrong to her more than anything else. I did not listen to her. I acted as if her voice did not matter, that I knew everything and she knew nothing. And sometimes even in our churches, we act just like that. And I'm sure that a lot of us are feeling like I felt when kids come back to you and say, see, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you that the church needs to transform. I tried to tell you that the church needs to go in a different direction. I tried 
tried to tell you that the program that you have not actually speaking to me. I tried to tell you that the way you are trying to teach us is not working for us. I tried to tell you that. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you if you would just listen to my voice. And I believe a lot of us have had moments like that. If we wanted to be honest and truthful, that a lot of us have had moments like that when people have said to us or even said behind our backs, I tried to tell you. And I believe this is what happens in this text. When we flip over one chapter later, we hear Caleb and Joshua saying that they are upset. They are tired because they knew what God had told them and that that land was for them. And why they did not honor what God had for them, God says, since you don't understand who I am, since you don't know who I am, since I've been trying to build this relationship with you all of this long time, I'm going to let you walk and wander in the wilderness for 40 whole years. And can you imagine that? Can you imagine the conversation between Caleb and Joshua? See, I tried to tell y'all if we would just listen to God. See, I tried to tell you that that was our land. See, I tried to tell you that was our grapes. That was our fruit. I tried to tell you that that was our food. But y'all didn't want to hear our voices. You thought that our voices did not matter. And now we are here wandering around in this hot wilderness because we did not listen to God. Is there anybody in here who's going to say that now I'm going to sit back and allow my ears to be open? I'm going to pray a little bit more because I want to make sure that I'm hearing God's voice from whomever it is coming from. Whether that they are young or oh, I want to listen. I want to listen to what God is saying because I just believe that God is indeed able to use anybody to get a message to his people. I want you young people to know your voice matters. Let us pray. Father and our God, we just want to tell you thank you, Lord. Lord, help us to understand that we can all be used by God. Help us to understand that you put something inside of all of us. Help us to know that you are indeed a wonderful God and you use wonderful people to get your message through. And God, for those who haven't listened, Lord, help us to listen. Help us to be still and listen to people. Help us to honor them by honoring you. God, we love you. We praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Wow, what a mighty word. What a mighty word. We thank God for that word of God from Pastor Young. In case there's someone who is watching or listening that want to get connected with Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior, Listen, it's simple as remembering your ABCs. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can be saved today. If that's you today, re repeat the sinner's prayer with me. Dear Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Cleanse me and make me whole. I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, it's just that simple. You are saved today. And perhaps you say, well, Reverend Z, I don't need to confess Jesus or accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I just need a covering while I'm here in New York. If that's you today, as you're watching, we ask that you please email, text, or call us so we can get you connected with our ministry. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to carry you and keep you and give you strength. Thank you for connecting with our ministry because you are seated in a great place. Be blessed and be encouraged. And thank you for connecting with our ministry. Well, that concludes our service on today. And we want to thank you for worshiping with us. But before you hit the exit sign, I want to let you know that we have a postlude. You are going to be blessed today from Caleb Greenfield. He is going to play today. So we ask that immediately following me, given the benediction that you are hang around just a little longer as Caleb 
play a great song. So be blessed, be encouraged. Listen, may the Lord of God of the endurance encourage me, grant you harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ, that together you may be one voice, one glory in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be blessed and be encouraged. Amen and amen. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how you feel, but that worship service warmed my heart. And I am so thankful to see the young people, the children of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church, leading us in worship in such a wonderful way. Thank you to our guest preacher for the day. You sincerely blessed us and we are grateful for the word of God that you preached. Well, my brothers and sisters, I know your heart is warmed. I am so proud of our children, and I know you are too. So until the next time, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again.